Well, welcome everybody. I'm glad we all <laughs> got in here. I know uh, looks like Lou's actually driving. Please be careful, Lou. Uh, we are uh, uh, just wanting to let you know that this is the second iteration of our uh, Learn and Lead. Uh, on with us today will be Jen Triplett and then also James Gold is going to get into a few things. But before we get into that, I uh, want to kind of go back to do just a brief review of some of the things we talked about at the last session. And that was like, you know, why, you know, what's the purpose of your organization? Why does it exist? What do you do anything? And what we have found is uh, it is incredibly important that that's defined by your organization. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily, uh, and people could care less what you do. There's plenty of people that can find all the services that we all provide here. There, there are plenty of, uh, uh, was, I'm just going to pick out people. There's plenty of accountants. There's plenty of sign producers. There's plenty of pet sitters. There's plenty of cleaning folks. There's plenty of insurance people. As I look throughout here, you know, there's plenty of those kind of things where people have lots of options. So you should ask yourself the question, why should anybody do anything with me? And why should they care? Right. And they should care because the why part of what your organization is about is the reason why. You know, so as an example, uh, Larry sells consulting, right? Why did I start it? Why, why should you care? Why does anybody care? Right? So I started it to try to answer the question, why do I do what I do? And my answer to that question is, I do what I do because I want to help support small businesses and nonprofits in the area where I live. Because when they're successful, both small businesses and nonprofits, it makes our community a more viable place to live, grow, be a part of, and it just makes it a better living situation. So why do I do what I do? I do that because I want to see those things prosper because it makes our lives a lot better. And we, we need to kind of understand that and think about it. And I think it's important to give that some uh, thought in your organization if you haven't done that, right? I think that's incredibly important. Remember, People don't care. People don't care what you do. They could care less what you do, or what they want to know is why do you do it? Because it aligns with the emotional part of why people make purchases. I'd love to take credit for it, uh, but you know, if if you look at uh, 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 Simon Sinek, and there's a link that I've sent out to some of the other people in our uh, Monday or our Wednesday uh, sessions. You know, he talks about people don't care what you do. They care why you do it because it aligns with the emotional component of your brain that helps to fundamentally make decisions. So when that's a favorable situation, people will align with it. It's important to get that point. So I, I won't gloss over it more than that, other than it is really worthy of your time for your organizations to think that through. Uh, I can sell insurance, but it, so can a lot of other people, Right. Uh, I, I'll give you a quick story uh, what, that kind of illustrates the point. So everybody may, may know David Orso, the realtor. David Orso tells a story one time. He was pulled over by a police officer, right? Whether he was speeding or whatever he's done, probably was, no one day. But anyway, the officer asked for his license. David handed him his real estate license by mistake. And the officer looked at it and laughed out loud and said, everybody has one of these, right? So he was like, Ah, guys, what, you know, so think about that. What makes you different, right? People think like that. What makes you stand out in your field? What makes you different? It's important. A couple of things I want you to think about, uh, and it's some statistics that I brought up at the last session. I think it's important to think about it because it's, it's what FontStream found what was important for organizations. And it said the following few statistics, and not to bore you with it, but I think it's something to think about. And then I'm going to turn this over to Jen. 60% um, of people prefer to give online in North America. Something to think about. Here's what I think is the most important thing. 78% of Americans believe companies must consider their impact on society and not just make money. Every one of us that's got a window here wants to make money. Forget that. That's a given. We all understand that. But 78% of Americans believe that we have to consider the impact on society. So that's why when we say you need to align with something or there's something good, 
that it matters. And you got to continually to beat that drum. People aren't going to get it at first. Just like if I'd ask everybody here, tell me your why, some people will struggle with that, right? And that's okay. But, but I think the point is, don't struggle about it after today. I want you to think about it. And that's your homework assignment, right? I want you to think about that for the betterment of you. A couple other things. 70% of millennials, and that is a demographic we all need to be successful, right? 70% of millennials say they'll spend more on brands that support causes. Now, you need to let that sink in for a minute. Think about that. 70% of the millennials, and these are people with buying power, right? If you align with something, they are going to be more inclined to use your services and your goods. Uh, an important thing for organizations and really important in nonprofits, right? 65% of the Fortune 500 companies offer matching gift programs. So if you're not asking for a gift program and there is software out there for you to be able to log this onto your website, like four or $500 a year, it's a plug into your website and they tap in their, their uh, it's like double the donation. That's the, the link. I think, Patricia, that's something I showed you. Double your donation and you plug in your name and it says, yes, they double. And I'll be damned, it, you, they, you, you can double that donation just by making people aware, right? 84% of donors say they're more likely to donate if a match is offered. And here's why. I'm Larry Sells. I write uh, Bernie House a check for $100 and there's a matching grant by my company, which... Sorry, Larry Sales Consulting doesn't have that. But say I was Verizon or some national company, uh, and they go, yeah, they got a matching grant. I can feel good that I meant $200 to Patty, right, instead of 100 right? So it's important to note that. And then the last thing I will say is, and we cannot forget this thing, right? This thing is an incredible tool that people are used to. I guarantee you, everybody here, has it right next to them. If, if it, it's not in another room, it's right here next to you, right? Hold your phones out. Everybody got your phones? Hold them up here, right? Look at that. Everybody has it, right? Here's the thing I want you to remember. 25% of donors donate via mobile devices and donations via mobile device are up 205%. So that would tell you that if you're doing fundraising, you better consider that as a component, as a way people want to give and how you reach the millennials and how you reach people. Because if it isn't here and you made me do something really crazy, I'm not doing it, right? I'm just not going to do it. I'm used to this. My wife says I'm into instant gratification, right? Well, yeah, I want things to happen quickly. And I and here's the effort. So bottom line, um, the key to nonprofits and the key to any business is understand why you do what you do. The other thing is be fact-based and thinking right? Uh, do research on your own. If you're, not, if you're not taking the strategic time to think about these components, why you do what you do, uh, elements of the, the demographics that affect your business and understanding them deeply and intimately, we're missing a boat. And you're missing out on sales and you're missing out on business and you're missing out on donations. So know your why, know your people, know your demographics, and with that, I'd like to say, I hope you found that helpful. Everybody's got a TV screen here that I'm looking at right now. I want you to know your why, and I want you to take time to strategically plan and think about your business in the way others look at you. It's not how you look at you. It's how others look at you and how they find you. So with that, I thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Jen now, who's going to go uh, into some of the tools, and then we'll get into James. So we'll handle questions at the end. So Jen. All right, thanks. So segueing from the cell phone, um, it is important to know the tools that are available to you. And one of the tools that we have found helpful, not only for our nonprofit clients, for, but for our for-profit clients is the Microsoft Office suite, so to speak. Um, things that they have, even you can use your phone connecting with like your PC, syncing all of your files, your emails, your, your calendars, your bookings. Um, it really is a powerful tool. And James is here today to kind of talk about 
some of the special programs that Microsoft does offer for nonprofits, which includes some free packages. So with that, I'm going to give the floor, virtual floor, over to James Golden. But I do want to quickly mention that we are recording this. So if you don't want your picture to show up, you can just simply put a comment, personal comment to me in the chat, and I can block your face out completely. However, it would be great visibility. So here we are. Be proud don't do that is what I would tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hello, but I have, to, I have to offer it. <laughs> anyway, thank you for the introduction, Jen, and good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to see if I can share my screen here, and hopefully, I've got three monitors, so it's always a make sure I share the right one here. No worries. Let me know if you need any help with the. Yeah. You should have permissions. Yep. And do you see the? Which should yeah. see a full uh, blue and, and and white background there. And all good. Yeah, yep. you are all good. Okay. Okay. So, um, actually, move this so I can see my uh, my notes here. Um, so, I started um, Golden Consulting twenty years ago to specifically uh, provide services to. Um, actually, it was to a small nonprofit organization that uh, whose whole mission was on serving the needs of um, young boys um, that had been in trouble with the juvenile justice system. Um, and then as they expanded and, and of course worked with, with the, you know, young girls as well. Um, th that's what I started Golden Consulting for. And, and I worked over the years with other um, nonprofit organizations, um, those serving uh, those with mental illnesses and development, developmental dis disabilities. Um, and I enjoy what I do because I enjoy serving those who, whose mission is to serve our communities. Um, and so hopefully I can... Uh, Give you some options and ideas for today, and and uh, and how you can uh, serve, and how to serve your why. Um, and of course, following up on our theme here, the right tool for the job. Um, uh, I'm not going to be able to see all of you at one time, but I'm sure most of you running nonprofit organizations feel that you uh, don't always have the funds available to buy the best software, or service, or the product that you need for for what you need to do. Um, and for the services you are able to attain, how difficult is, is it to manage? What I run into is is nonprofits buying this free tool to use for this and this free tool for that, <coughs> and none of those tools are ever interconnected. Um, you know, you create you you create this, you have all your your team members. You create different accounts for each one of them, and you have to um, give each one a separate password, and e and each team member has to know a different password for a different service to get the job done. Um, and so that leads us right into Microsoft's 365 plans. Um, for those that don't know, Microsoft 365 is Microsoft's integrated online platform for business and education. It's hosted enterprise class email, it's cloud storage, it's online collaboration, it's office applications, and much more. Um, and last year, Microsoft renamed Office 365 to, to Microsoft 365. And so you'll still hear me sometimes switch back and forth, but know that at least for today's purposes of discussion, I'm talking about the same thing. Um, for all businesses, whether for-profit or not-for-profit, communication and collaboration um, with both internal and external users are easily the most important requirements for success. It's how you reach your intended audience. It's how you reach those you're, 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 you're serving. And, um, but it's also more about more than just email. It's about presenting your organization's image in the best light possible. That means not just using a free email account from Gmail or Yahoo, but having your own custom domain that others will remember you better. Would do you think someone will remember better? jsmith492 at gmail.com or jsmith at myawesomeorganization.org? Which do you think will be read more often? Which do you think you get, will get past more spam filters? And more importantly, which do you think will lend more credibility to your organization? Um, and so for the Microsoft 365 basic um, business basic grant bundle, um, just like uh, um, M365's other business plans, it includes hosted email that you can use for your own custom domain. And each mailbox has 50 gigs of storage space. Um, but email isn't the only means of business communication. It's not always the Sorry. best method of communication. <laughs> Um, it can be somewhat one-sided, waiting for a reply that may never come. Um, but we've all seen the power of instant messaging, whether it be LinkedIn messages, 
or you know LinkedIn Messenger or Facebook Messenger um, or apps like um, WhatsApp or Slack. And so Microsoft provides our Teams app. Um, let's say you're working on a grant request with a Teams channel. Your team could be chatting back and forth, having a conversation about the document they're all working on at the same time. Um, no need to email the document back and forth, waiting for replies and wondering if you're even working on the same version at the same time. And your teams can be in comp completely different locations. Um, I don't know. I've, I've heard there's been this work from home thing since last year, but um, I'm not sure anybody what they're talking about there. Do you? <laughs> um, but let's say you want to have a face to face meeting at the click of a button, you can start a team's meeting. You don't need to purchase separate licenses from Zoom or jump to another platform. And another component is that your files can live in Teams, easily accessible along with the communication for a particular topic or project, but you also might, they also might be better residing in SharePoint. Think of SharePoint as your file server in the cloud, but without needing to, to spend $5,000 for a server on site. And just like documents and Teams, your, document, your team can be working on the same document at the same time. Um, for files that will only ever be accessed by you, there is one drive for business with each user account having a one terabyte of storage, which is a lot of data. SharePoint is where you put your files that the entire organization or departments need access to. And OneDrive is for documents that don't require any collaboration um, or others to access. For example, the organization's director might wanna keep the spreadsheet of staff salaries in their OneDrive folder um, rather than on SharePoint for everybody else to see. Um, but you also can share files in your OneDrive with others if need be. And if I have time, we'll talk about the request files feature of OneDrive, which is really cool. Um, and does anyone want to make a guess as to how much this will cost you for, for, for this plan? Um, I guess everybody's muted there. Um, well, this is the best part. This plan is absolutely free for up to 300 user accounts. So unless you have more than 300 staff members, it is no cost to you. Um, unfortunately, though, the business basic grant package does not include the desktop apps or the Microsoft Bookings apps, which we'll talk about here in a minute. For most nonprofit organizations, working from web um, applications are, is fine. Most of you probably work with Google apps at some point and are used to working only on, on within the web pages. Um, but if you need applications like off Outlook or Word or Excel or Publisher, um, then you can move up to Microsoft's business uh, standard plan. And the good thing is for this, for, for nonprofits, it's only $36 per year. This is the same package that Microsoft sells businesses for, for $150 per user per year. Um, unfortunately, there's no free licenses with this plan, but as you can see, it's quite, quite discounted. Um, but you can add um, not only your staff members, um, but you can also add your volunteers and other un unpaid staff to this plan. Um, and for even more features, like management of your computers and enhanced security, you can move up to the business premium package. And I'm sure you're thinking, um, I don't need all those extra features or organizations, uh, you know, or, or that our organization can't afford that. Um, well, here's the good news absolutely free for up to 10 users. So if you're a nonprofit organization with under 10 staff members, you can have all the best features of, of Microsoft 365 absolutely for free. You get the full range of desktop apps, plus all the features we've talked about with Exchange, SharePoint, um, Teams, and so on. But these are all what I've called the, what I've talked about called the foundation features, and I believe that every organization needs. But I'd like to mention a few other features that I believe are beneficial to nonprofits that most people don't even know about that are included in Microsoft 365. And for all those that are on the call that are not nonprofits, these all still apply to you as well if you're using Office, Office or Microsoft 365. Um, if you need project or task planning, there's um, the Planner app, and if you need your personal tasks. Um, to be tracked, there's to do, the Microsoft's To Do app. Um, with the planning planner app, you can assign tasks to team members. You can get notified of due or almost you know, almost due or overdue task. Um, you can also create subtasks, assign priorities, start dates, and so on. Um, and some of this, if I get at the end here, we'll actually dive into the more uh, online here. 
Um, if you've ever used SurveyMonkey to send surveys to uh, your audience, um, or even within you know internal team members, well, Microsoft has that covered too with their their uh, um, their forms application. Um, so you can send surveys, you can send information requests, um, and again, all included. Um, if you really start adding on to um, the capabilities, Microsoft's Power Automate app, you can actually create automatic workflows. Um, like you could have an approval process and send an email when a form submission is received. Um, so a lot of stuff you can automate in the background and not have to do any manual work to once, you, once you're set up. Um, if you want more brainstorming type, type of format, you can use their whiteboard. Um, how many times you go into have a meeting with staff and then you know everybody's scrambling to take notes or take photos of the whiteboard well with microsoft you could put it on a, on, on a big touch screen somewhere um, or you know project your your screen you can create your ideas on, on on a whiteboard and then they're saved so you can go back and actually revise them later on um, scheduling scheduling is usually a big big issue um, some of you obviously know about the Cal Calendly app. Well, Microsoft also has their bookings app. You know, instead of going back and forth with trying to schedule a meeting, you can let get somebody your bookings link. You can put this on your website as well, and they can book a Teams meeting right with you uh, from that link. And as I mentioned, though, this is only available in um, the two higher plans, the standard and the premium plans. It's not available in their basic grant package. Um, there are higher requirements to meet for the nonprofit discounting pricing. Um, one, you need to be a 501c3 organization registered with the IRS. You must have a mission to benefit the local community, which is exactly what we're talking about today and what, you know, of course, Larry uh, pushes for, and I believe in too. Um, you can't use your licenses for your donors or members. So like your church, you can't use it for your members or for your donors for your nonprofit organization. Um, you can't share your licenses with other organizations, even if they're affiliated, each organization would need to be that 501c3 and um, have their own licenses. And last, you can't have a policy of discrimination. Um, and of course, Microsoft's link, nonprofits, slash eligibility for uh, more, de more details. There are a few other plans. And so some of these plans you can actually mit mix and match. So some of the ones that maybe not uh, like the business grant one that doesn't include um, unpaid staff where you can purchase other plans and some of them are low as $2.50 per user per month. Um, and so with that, I'd like to see if I can take it online for a minute. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can switch screens here. Let me get out of here. And let's see here. Okay, can everybody see uh, my Outlook email one right now? Um, so, again, talk about, you know, cause it's just to give you a little more online idea, we all know about email. That looks the same, but with uh, Microsoft 365, you're going to get more of those enterprise grade features. You know, one of the big things is I've got shared mailboxes here. So if you have like an info at mailbox, and instead of getting to one person or missing those messages, you could actually give multiple users, multiple mailboxes access to that, that shared mailbox. Um, and everybody would have access to know what was sent and you know, maybe an email came in and, and what was replied to. Um, again, Teams. Teams is where you're gonna have your all your online discussion. Um, you can have chats back and forth. You can store your files here. Um, you can even start doing wikis. Um, you know, you can add, there's other add-ins you can, you can add in here all again free. Um, you know, I've got one here credit to start tracking my assets, you know. Um, but again, you, you know, within the Teams app, you've, you've still got your calendar, so you can start Teams meeting right within here. Um, again, it gives you that all encompassing online um, collaboration that is so crucial to, to success of businesses. Um, 
I talked about SharePoint, you know, accessing files in one place, um, and forms. Here we talk about with the surveys. You want to send surveys out or ask uh, um, customers, for, you know, for information. Same thing as like a surveys monkey, but again, it's all included, um, and it's all within one platform to manage it from. Can I ask you a quick question on that? Are the, do you make those questions up, James, or were they already preformed in there? Nope, I, I make them up. I can maybe it's a good idea. So I can do new form, and I can you know give my whatever title I want. I can change. Oh, nice. I can change themes. Okay. You know, nice. I can do add new, and you've got a choice of questions: be choice, text, date. Um, you know, so maybe choices. Um, Question one, you know, I'm not going to get too detailed here, but question one, choice one or choice two. Okay, nice. I can add new and say I want to do text. Well, I can give them a long answer or I can make make it forced to a short answer. Oh, wow. So it can be a rather long, you know, and I can make it required. I can make it not required. Um, you know, once you, once you do your questions, you can change the order. Um, and what's cool is you can actually start adding branching. So I can say, okay, well, if they choose option one, they can actually get a whole different set of questions. Um, and just kind of keep building on that. Um, cool, thank you. You're quite welcome. Um, you know, Microsoft Whiteboard, we talked about. You know, this of course works better with the tablet. Come on, stop spinning here. Yeah, so you can, you know, you can take and you know, if I want to do a pie chart here or something like that and color it in, you know, I can do some kind of, you know, you know, mind map things or whatever you want to do. But the thing is, you could actually have, you know, like I said, you know, you can put, put this up on, on a projector screen or, or even better if you have a large touch screen monitor, you know, on site. Um, then what, whatever you're doing here is actually captured um, for later on. You know, and then you can actually share that out back with team members. Say, Here, here's what we talked about today. Here's the whiteboard and, and then share it out with everybody. Um, talked about bookings a little bit, you know, um, same thing. I have a bookings page, um, you know, I can open up. So if you, so if I, I can put this link on my website, um, you know, somebody can pick a date and time. They can actually specify what staff they want to meet with. Um, you know, maybe I, they can add notes. What you know, part of this is how I set up the the, the bookings page, and and um, you know, same thing. Most of you are, I think, most of you that were used to, on these calls now are used to like the Cal Calendly app, and well, bookings is the same thing. But if you're already using Office 365 and you're and you're nonprofit, this is completely free to you. Um, and then oh, I shouldn't talk about Planner, did I? What, did I have Planner open? No. Let me go back here for a second. Let's open up the uh, planner then. And this so you can kind of see, you can see, I mean, I've got a few apps here because I actually, um, as a Microsoft partner, I have a bigger plan um, than some of the, the, the business plans, but you know, there's a ton of apps and add-ins with Office 65 um, that are available to most, almost all the plans. Um, but where did, my, where did my planner go here? So I open up planner. You know how many times you have projects you're working on with teams. Maybe it's you know it might be end of, end of year. Maybe you're working on a grant. Well, that, that's usually a project within itself. Um, you know, so I can I can create a new plan and give it a name, make it public or private. Create a plan. And of course, live demos always have have some uh, time here. You know, I can create I can create multiple tasks one. And I could assign it to, you know, different users. You know, so if you can assign, assign to different team members, um, you know, I actually go back in. If I make it pretty, let me see your project. If I go back to my, my, you know, I've got a pretty uh, comprehensive um, project plan here for when I onboard um, clients to my managed services plan. Um, but within within the each task, I can have have checklist, you know, so I can have subtask. I can specify date, progress, priority. Um, you know, I think probably everybody online probably sees a ton of uh, online advertisements for, for Monday.com is a big one now. 
Um, but again, with Office 365, it's all here. And the best part is, like I said, you, you saw how easy it was. I can assign it to my current team members. I don't, you know, it's all same platform. And then, like I said, there's for my personal task, I can have, you know, to, uh, Microsoft to do application. And that'll, and for both of these, Planner and To Do, there's also a phone app. So I, I can take these with me wherever I go. Um, same as with Teams. Um, and some of these, like Microsoft Whiteboard, also has a desktop version of the application. Um, you know, SharePoint, I can actually open the files up on my desktop as well. Um, and so that's all I have. Um, you know, the challenge is I think this Office 365 I think is the right tool for for I think for for both for-profit and not-for-profit businesses. I think there's it's it's a great platform. Microsoft continues to add to it and. Um, and I think especially for, for organizations that, that are struggling to, to, you know, have a lot of balls to juggle, you know, and, 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 and find the tools they need um, and best serve that diverse range of, of, of their customers. I think the 365 is a, the best way to go. So with that. Uh, James, question. Uh, sure. So, you know, I speak as a... Um, a person that's been very involved with a lot of nonprofits in my day and and a lot of what I would say one one trick pony kind of folks right so it's like one person is trying to do all this so the tool is fantastic I think we'd all agree but if I'm like not the most technical person in the world and I'm doing lots of wearing lots of hats in my nonprofit um and I come to you and I say, James, geez, I like that, but I can't do this. By I don't know even where to start, but I know I need it. You know, um, how is the engagement with you work? And then give me a ballpark because everybody's a bottom line person, whether you're a business or an operation. What does it cost to engage James Golden to implement this with some training in my nonprofit or my business? Um, this is a ballpark. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I, the first part of your question there is, is yeah, I mean, whether it's any organization I start working with, it's going to come in and I'm going to assess what, what their needs are. Um, you know, I believe, I do believe in having the right tool for the job. And, you know, sometimes organizations, you know, I'm not going to sell, one, I'm not going to sell them something they don't need or, or have them give them something that, because what's, what's the point of getting them a tool if they're not going to use it? Right. You know, if, if they've got a bunch of hammers or nails to hammer, um, I'm not going to give them a screwdriver. I'm going to give them a hammer. Um, and so it's going to be assessment and, um, and then we're going to work with them to, to make sure, you know, we're set timelines up and decide, okay, you know, we're going to, we're going to lay out a project plan and, 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 and how to put that together. Um, once, as far as the technical side, once, um, you know, once it's in place, I think most of it actually becomes very easy to, to manage. Um, you know, none of my customers do I ever just leave an alert and, you know, they, they always know they can, you know, I'm always here with a phone call or email or text message away to say, okay, well, I have a question about this or something's not working right. You know, you know, I don't, I don't leave them on their own, but I think once, once they're taught, um, here's where you go to do this, here's where you kind of do this. I think Microsoft has really made most of those applications quite easy to use within the application itself. Um, obviously, there's the administrative part, which is more complicated, and, and that is where where I, I fit in at. Um, for nonprofits, I actually discount my my hourly rates. Um, you know, I'm right now I'm about 105 an hour, so you know. But again, it's it's going to depend on um, some things are going to be project based, and it, and it might just be a flat you know flat flat fee for me to come in. But you know, it's going to vary because you know if you've got two people in an organization, obviously it's going to be very different cost. Um, then, you know, if you've got, you know, 30 or 40 users in your organization, obviously it's, one's going to be a lot, lot more time intensive. Um, you know, we're going to do a lot more training, things like that. Um, so, mm -hmm. well, and so what I, what I heard there, right. Is, um, you know, first of all, it's free. The tool is free. Yes. Uh, the cost, uh, would be based on need via an assessment of the organization, which could let everybody kind of know to what detail they needed to have um, 
and and obviously the more complex, the more cost. We all understand that, but but uh, it sounds like uh, you could utilize Microsoft 365 and all what they have, and through your uh, overall project analysis in terms of going in in terms of needs assessment and all that, determine a cost that would be probably. I would say affordable by every nonprofit and affordable by every business here. Am I crazy? No, no, absolutely. No. And, and, and it's why I've worked with nonprofits over the years is, you know, um, you know, I've had a heart to serve. And, 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 and so, I mean, so nonprofits yep. are great in that regard, but yes, I, I think I, I, it, whether you're nonprofit or for-profit, there's always still a cost to doing stuff. You know, yep. and it's whether it's 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 mm-hmm. and use it nonprofits. The biggest challenge is you don't have enough staff to go around. Mm-hmm. So the more you can do with fewer people, it's still you're still going to save money at that point. Mm-hmm. So yeah. even so, even there's sometimes an upfront charge, you know, to to get to get the services on board and get the application going. The overall time is that's saved. Um, and again, when we talk about multiple platforms and and and, tra- and, and a headache of, of managing multiple platforms, um, it, it, it's you know easily cost justified. I think that you also have to look if you break down the cost per day, it's about two dollars, two dollars and fifty cents, something like that, which you quoted. So that I mean, that's sure. probably what a cup of coffee. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And, you know, yeah. black coffee at that. <laughs> right. Well, you know, when I look at at people like like for example, Liz or. Patty Slaughter or Joy Cortina, you know, that are, are uh, kind of like, you know, they're out there getting it, man. And it's like, it's like this, it can be almost, you can be frozen into inaction because it's so much, you don't know how to, 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 to attack it. And it sounds like James, you are the answer to that. So I guess for, for any of the nonprofits or businesses that are on here, James is an expert at this, if you didn't notice. And I think what's important is there's a low risk to do this. But I think, you know, when you say, look at the cost to implement it, I think you got to think holistically here. I think it's important to understand what is the opportunity cost if you don't, right? right. And that is more inefficiency in your organization, right? And uh, that can be complex and also frustrating, right? So it can stop you and hold you up and not let you be productive and and you find yourself spending more time working on things that that could that there's a tool out here instead of beating nails in a board with a screwdriver, you can use a damn hammer. And uh, so James, I mean, I get that. And I would say, don't be frightened to make a mis- to make a decision here, right? Don't be afraid to use a free tool uh, and know that there's some cost to implement it. And I think you may find when you get in, it's easier as we all have used this as as we the more you use it, the easier it gets, right? And I'm trying to drop the fear factor here and say, look, give it a whirl and you're more efficient and then look how much more time you'll have to do the things you need to do. Like Patty and Joy, meeting with the large donors and spending time doing that instead of worrying about how your email is getting out of the organization or how do I communicate within my organization? So I think that's powerful stuff, James, uh, from my perspective looking in. And I hope that everybody here listening to this drops the guard and goes, yep, you know what? I, I got to make a step for my business or my nonprofit to be more efficient. And here's tools to do it. Yep. I, if I could I add agree. something too, I, I actually didn't know about all those features, James. I didn't know about the project planning. I just started planning for the parade. We can have the parade right. this year. <laughs> yeah. So I was using um, Google. And, and, and then I use SurveyMonkey and I use something else. And, you know, so I've got all these different platforms that I'm using. And what I love about this, it brings it into one platform. Really? Something else that I've been asked to do is to start creating a manual for the chamber. So when I'm abducted by an alien, <laughs> I can come in and take over. And so I started doing that too. And I thought, I'm using Google and, you know, there are all these splinter platforms so I could bring it all back into office, which I have and I pay for. Um, but yeah, yeah. That, that's really fantastic. Well, you know, I, I tell think- you just, oh, sorry, Larry. No, ladies. <laughs> I, no, go ahead. <laughs> I can tell you from experience, um, we just started de- using Microsoft about two years ago and 
it has tenfold increased our productivity and the way that we run um, all of our processes more efficiently, mm -hmm. even from like the bookings that we've just started using um, to the file sharing and even sharing files outside of our organization to other clients, setting up an intranet area where they can upload things and actually view sort of a website looking area where they can look at storyboards, look at um, navigation things for websites, things like that, download contracts. I mean, it really has been a time saver and money saver. Yeah. So it's been well worth the return on our investment. Right. I mean, Jen and I talked in the beginning, like, can we, you know, can we afford to do this? You know, it's it, when you're a small business, any extra expense or especially a nonprofit, you're, you're questioning, is this, you know, is this, can we do this? And I, I don't know how we couldn't have done it. Like I, we would not be doing what we're doing right now. If we didn't have Microsoft, one of us would be losing our minds more so than <laughs> e-learning has made us lose our minds. But more so than normal, right? I get it. Exactly. Right? <laughs> well, you know, I think another way to look at it, and I thought Liz brought up a really good point here, right? Uh, we live in a world, if we're not careful, uh, of stovepipes, right? Stovepipes that don't talk to each other. So I got Google Docs. I've got another calendar application or a scheduling application. And the next thing you know, your life is complicated because you're juggling all these things that don't connect, right? Here is something that can be, think of it as, and James, correct me if I'm seeing this wrong, but it's still some stovepipes that communicate with each other. So they still are areas where you'll work but they all communicate across the platform. Yeah, and, and, and there's a foundation there, like I said, between you know, having access to all of your team members in, in, one, in one place, mm -hmm. um, different, and, and, and like I said, and, and there, you know, I really didn't get into, um, was there the one piece of power automate? Um, I kind of mentioned it briefly, where like the forms, you, you submit a form and you can have the, the power automate automatically um, act on that form submission. Well, like I've got, I mean, and the simplest, like I, I've got a real simple um, automation task where I've got my my client's firewalls send me a email me a backup. Well, instead of me once a month taking that backup manually, copy, you know, saving it from my email and saving it to the client's you know documentation folder, I've got the automation tool automatically doing that for me. It says, hey, here's an email from from this client's firewall, and here's the file, and here's where I need to go go dump it at. Um, and so there's somewhat stovepipes, but there's also some, er, and, and, and this work is a little, obviously a little more complicated on the back end side and, and where, you know, obviously where I can come in at, um, but you can really, they really start merging together and, and, and there's a foundation there that, that really does bring them together. Just real quick, is that like a scripting that you create, that you can create like anything to do that automatic? It's, it's, Richard? it's actually very GUI driven. Um, Okay. And so you, there's James for the non-computer people. GUI oh, means yeah. graphical right. user interface. <laughs> so generally a drag and drop. <laughs> right. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Right. Um, but there, there's pre-canned templates. So basically, there, you know, so you can go in and, and it says, okay, well, here, here's a common, um, um, the, the Power Automate tool used to be called Flow. So, so I still kind of go back to it there. But, um, but so you can create these flows, and and a lot of them are made for you already. So you just have to basically assign them to say a mailbox or to to a SharePoint folder, um, but you have a lot of, of of it is all drag and drop as, as Denise um, correct correct me on um, that you can um, really use to 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 make those those automation tasks work in the background for you. Cool. So. Yeah, you know, I guess uh, I look at this and I'm going, you know, I know some people. Uh, I think here in the group. Uh, might go, yeah, man, that sounds good, but you know, darn, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure uh, how this will help me, but I, it sounds like it will. And I would just challenge those people that are maybe thinking that, right? A call to James will set you free, right? <laughs> and don't be afraid to call him, and it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to do this, right? Yeah, it's you, a free you, tool, you, you and he's going to. You call me. I'm going to give you advice. And, you know, I'm not going to charge you for that. Just you know, well, have, and, have and a here's conversation, the, and 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 let's see what what your needs even are. So right, but here's what I heard from you, James, too. So when it's like, well, there you go. See you later. I'm done. No, James is going to be there, right? So he'll be your lifeguard through the process too. So and maybe look, James, I'm not trying to sell could, James's if, business, 
I'm just trying to tell you as a person <laughs> that you know, I'm hired, right? You know, but as a person who deals with nonprofits a lot and small businesses a lot, I see the need could be solved by this. And I'm saying, be bold. Don't be afraid. A call can't hurt you. And, and kick your own self in the butt and do something about this, right? I was going to say, if there's enough interest, maybe James would be willing to come back for a specific topic at another yeah. month, another meeting yeah. as well. Not to put you on the spot. On the spot yeah. Uh, James would say yes, I'm sure. <laughs> right, James? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no problem. No pressure, James. <laughs> All right. So does anybody have any questions or want to unmute and shoot away? Well, we did have a question in the chat about, um, and I, I, I answered it briefly, but um, about um, levels of security related to customers and non-employees. And you can set access levels for internal and external. I don't know if there's something more that John Clark had asked the question he wanted to know, um, but answered it. Well, as far as for, for some of the pricing for the packages, like I said, and I try to point out there are some... Um, or, or for nonprofit, for the discounted packages, there's some you, you can't have if they're if they're not paid employees, um, or not um, say like board members, you know, unpaid executive staff, um, like the, the the business basic grant package, you you can't include them anyway. Um, but for the higher level plans, the, the standard and a premium, um, you can actually um, um, bring those 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 people in. Um, but yeah, you can, you can certainly have different levels of security. I mean, you know, with Office 65, I mean, from, from an administrative point of view, um, there's there's a, a, a role-based option, you know, so I, I have administrators, I can have just the standard, you know, limited permissions users. Um, you, you know, within SharePoint, you know, you can you can grant permissions. So so maybe somebody has a, has a read-only permission to a file while others have full, you know, permission to it. So yeah, you, you can definitely, with an Office, Office 65, you can definitely get very granular in how you sign the, those permissions. Does that, does that answer your question, John? Or? Good. I have a question. Is there a limit on the number of questions you can ask? Because the free survey monkey is very restricted. And I can, I, it's limited to 10 questions and then there's certain restrictions within that, what you can do. Um, so with this, is it unlimited because you pay for it? It's, it's to my knowledge, it's, it's unlimited. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Sur Survey Monkey and like other ones, I mean, cause they're giving you a free plan and they, you know, they're, they, they want to find a way to, to, to okay, they want you to pay for the plan. So, right. um, but like I said here, and, and this is what, Again, Office 65, it's, it's all about business tools. Mm -hmm. we're, we, they just have to say, okay, well, we're going to discount them for the nonprofit, but you're still getting the full line of business tools. That, that, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, and the one thing I would add here, Liz, too, is uh, let's, let's remember less can be more, right? So um, if I'm taking a survey, chances are, uh, and we've all done it, where we've taken one where there's 20 or 30 questions and you hate life, almost done, right? 80% there, right? It's like, and you're worn out. You hate the people that did it, right? So be wary of like less is more here. I think if there are 10 good questions, uh, make them really super good or 12 or whatever it is, but just be wary of unlimited because that can like make people not like you. Right. I will say, and I'm saying that with all the love in the world. But Larry, you're you're speaking to me because I'm one of those guys who will sign up. I will literally stop it halfway through and not even finish it. If yep. when, I'm like, I've been here for 15 minutes. I'm only 60 percent through. Nope, done. Yeah. 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 You're right. I'm you're right. With you. I'm with you. But one of the things that Survey Monkey does is, if it's multiple choice, you can only pick one. It won't let you pick more than one. You have to pay for that. So even with 10 questions, you know, you can only pick right. in multiple choice, pick one thing. So. Well, yeah. I heard 365 is a better survey options. What I just heard. Yeah. Well, and, and I'd say too, if you really, if you have so many questions, again, kind of what you're talking about, I mean, I, mm -hmm. what I like about the, the Microsoft forms is because 
because ultimately you're trying to get certain if you're trying to get certain information okay well if if they believe you know think this way then maybe i want this information but that's why like the the the, the, the branching option because if if they only th you know think or answer this way then i can say okay well let's let's disregard this whole chain of other chain of thinking here um or train of thinking and and say okay well, let's let's lead them off on this branch so you can so you can go this way with that line of questioning versus you know kind of going back and forth trying to get and because there's too many questions you're you're, you're kind of left going okay well, what does this mean anyway but right yep. right awesome so james i have one quick question for you it, it, and i don't know if you can fully speak to this but you know, there's the the Google for nonprofits um, suite that we've been using um, since our start. What do you think is the biggest difference between that and this? Is there is there you, just in terms of user friendliness and the, the the syncing between things? What do you find is the biggest difference? Um, I guess for interest disclosure, I'm not a big Google fan. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I had a feeling. Um, part, multiple reasons um one it, it, it well i mean we are even even the google plan it used to be google apps for business then it became google suite and or g suite and i think now it's like google workplace um but there's an entire graveyard of google apps that they said okay well you know we don't like their, they don't really help us um so we're just going to discard them and well if if you're any kind of business for or non for profit that you start to rely on that, well, okay, well then you, they just killed killed that application. Um, the other thing I don't, my biggest issue with with Google is is they are first and foremost an advertising company. They make their money off of advertising. They make no bones about it. And the, to do that, they scan all your data so they can better target ads to you. Um, the difference in the nonprofit plans with them um, is they won't give target the ads to you but there's nothing to keep them from still scanning all your data um emails or whatever to use to still better target you know and and and, and more more advertising um if, if google works for you fine i still think what i've seen of google over the years i've had customers i've moved from from the old g sweep and google apps yeah. office 365 i still think I would, yeah. I was, one it's the foundation it, it's it, it was started for businesses um, versus I think Google is more of this, you know, okay, we, we start with Gmail and just kind of keep adding bits and pieces to it. Um, but um, I'm losing my train of thought now. Um, I, I still find the Google apps are, are somewhat disparate. I mean, uh, it's, it's just been my experience and, and you know, and, and if I could chime in for a second, I would say one of the bigger problems I've experienced because we work with Google all the time, I'm currently dealing with an issue with Google ads and the help, it's not really there. You know, if you have a problem with Microsoft, I think their help is 100%. And believe me, I'm, I'm speaking as a person who was a Linux user on open source platforms for Word docs and not really Word, but their open source platform and was a bit of a Microsoft hater. And I've drinking the kool-aid now and um <laughs> they are absolutely their customer service if you need to get on a call and they need to walk you through something it's hands down unbelievable and as a nonprofit, you don't have time or even as a small business you don't have time to spend all this time going back and forth i mean so that would be my two cents on on definitely why it's a better bang for your buck thank you i also heard heard the flat i mean i had a flag there about privacy and them being able to use your information for other things and ads yeah that that's another thing that's, that's concerned me especially as we get into bigger things as an organization i really want to be conscious of that yeah and is it difficult to take the, um the google documents and everything and implement them into th office for the most part yeah um but you're always going to run into um conversion you know there's always some formatting differences i mean you know if, you, if you've got something in a google spreadsheet and, and try to bring it in excel you know sometimes it's hit or miss word you know documents of course are, are um, I, I have to laugh because it, it, true story there was, there was an issue with um during one of the, the election lawsuits um 
that there was a delay. One of the, um, I don't know, one of the Pennsylvania suits or something like that, and there was a delay because, I guess on on on. I guess on Trump's legal teams or something that they, they uh, were going back and forth between Google Docs and and and, Mike and Word Docs and and completely screwed the formatting up or something like that. And so they had actually asked for um, a delay in 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 the hearing just so they can get their their, their documents squared away because of it. So um. awesome. Well, James, I appreciate your time today. Uh, and Jen, yours too, and everybody that took time to be on this. Uh, I'm hoping you found some value in uh, these things. I would say, at the very least, fear not. And a phone call costs nothing, right? To to a James, and I know there's some people here that probably could use that efficiency in their organization. It's something to not be afraid of, right? I mean, if it makes you more efficient, able to do more things, be with donors, uh, work on your business instead of in your business. I think that's some good stuff to do. So Jen, I'll throw it back to you. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say thanks to everybody that um, <clears throat> came in and we plan on having another learn and lead for nonprofits third week, right? Third Tuesday at 8.30. <laughs> and I thanks for your patience as we're trying to get registration system and process so liz doesn't have to do as much work <laughs> since she's in another situation <laughs> right all right everybody so, well we're here if you need us don't hesitate to call and uh, thank you all yeah. for being here today thank you everybody yeah thank james, you. nice job thank you, james yeah. thank you really great information